Well, good morning, guys. We are about to go see if we can collect some hickory firewood out of the woods. But first, we need to see if we can resolve uh, this giant nail that's stuck in my tire here. So of course, we're going to yank that nail out of the tire. But this is one of those things uh, where you've got to be just completely prepared before you yank the nail out. Because once you yank the nail out, you've got to basically ream the hole out even more. And the air is just really coming out at that point. So... We're going to get everything prepared just right, and then we'll see if we can fix this tire. Now let's put a little soapy water on here, make sure we don't have any bubbles. And I'm not seeing any, so I think we're good. That nail was a whole lot bigger than I expected it to be. That is a monstrosity. That's like a 20 penny or at least a 16 penny. I'm telling you, if you don't have a safety seal kit around your place, uh, these can save you lots and lots of time and money. So, uh, yeah, word to the wise on these. These are great. So here's our tree right here. This is a hickory tree and it's been down now for, I'm really not sure, eight or 10 months, something like that. And originally it came down and got hung up between a couple of trees and sat there for a very long time until it finally came down. And uh, it's kind of in an ideal spot because it's been kind of hanging here off the ground for the most part for all of this time. And so I'm hoping that that has helped it at least shed some of the moisture that's on the inside. And thankfully it's right next to the road here as well. So pretty convenient tree. Uh, let's get into it and see what we get. So this right here is the second cut that we just made and you can kind of see the sapwood right there and it kind of appears to be a little punky but not so bad. I think it'll probably burn okay but the heartwood there's a little moisture left in it. Not nearly as bad as it would have been if it was just a green tree or a fresh tree. Uh, so I think this will dry out pretty good and hopefully fairly quickly. Um, and y'all saw there was some tension left in that tree in the end of that tree there where it was still kind of wedged between those two trees where it initially Initially fell um, so that was a little bit sketchy but it's all good let's see if we can get the rest of this thing cut up
So guys, I mentioned earlier that that tree had kind of been suspended in midair for eight or 10 months or so. And uh, so I was hoping that it was drier than most trees. And just by looking at it, it does appear to be a little drier. These fibers that are coming out, uh, they're not, they're still a little bendy, but you see they do kind of splinter and break as well. It feels not so, not as green as other ones that I have split into, but let's check it and see what it actually is. This is one of the uh, splits from one of the larger, oops, one of the larger rounds. So let's see what it's doing. It's reading 27. I've seen much, much higher. That's pretty rough as far as wood that you want to burn goes, but uh, I've seen a whole lot worse than that. Really, really wet wood can go up to 35, 40 and beyond. So this has been drying out in midair undoubtedly. So to compare it, this is a white oak piece that has been sitting here for well over a year. You've got 12% on that. So that one will burn great. This one will take a little while, but it'll burn eventually. So thought I would share that.
are not getting any lighter. Well, this is the last load I'm going to be, be able to get by hand for sure. Uh, these have gotten very, very heavy. I, I think maybe I'll just pull the tractor bucket right up here and see if I can load the rest of them up so I can transport them after we split this load. So tell me what this is. It's called dirt. It's called dirt? You made me dirt for a snack? It's not real dirt. <laughs> Why is it called dirt? Because that is pudding and that is cookie crumbs and those are gummy worms. Okay, so it just looks like dirt. Yeah. Okay. Doesn't taste like dirt. Nope. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Well guys, there's at least one more good load down there, but we'll work on that in the morning. Want another snail shell? A snail shell. I'm watching the video. Guys, that's it. We've got every piece loaded up into the bucket here on the tractor and ready to go up and split the rest of it. This whole operation was so difficult because if you can see here, there's a ditch that a lot of those logs were in right here and there was just really no good way to get them out of here. So I just kind of got them up onto the tractor the best way I knew how 
and uh, yeah it worked out it was a little bit difficult but we're good let's go split them and be done with it Well, that wraps that tree up so i was able to get that entire tree off of the ground and i'll have to say it's very very satisfying to be able to get it cut up get it split up and get it stacked up right here in this firewood shed here so uh, according to you hang out with me okay so according to my calculations or according to the internet's calculations uh that's three cubic yards of firewood that's 65 percent of a cord so about two-thirds or so of a cord and almost two face cords so that's lots and lots of firewood that's an entire tree that we just got stacked here in the shed uh, it's not dry of course uh, i did a whole bunch of measurements with the moisture meter and it averages about 30% along the outside of those rounds. It was, it kind of varied in the teens, uh, closer to the inside, it got closer to 30, and some of them on the inside, it got higher than 30, but uh, it's good that they have cured down some, so that's great. It'll be about a month before I attempt to use these, so they'll dry down a little bit more, and I'll just mix them with some good dry wood, and uh, it's not gonna burn like dry firewood wood, wood wood, uh, but it will burn uh, should burn okay so one more thing before we wrap up this video just to get our fireplace and chimney ready for this year so our next task is to check this chimney out make sure it doesn't have a ton of creosote or anything like that in it and we'll take the brush and we'll brush it out some just to kind of loosen up that junk and get it cleaner for the winter and it's got some in it but doesn't look too bad. Let me show y'all. Actually, it's looking kind of rough. We're going to scrub this out and see if we can get it better. That could definitely start a little chimney fire right there. So I don't know how well this shows up on camera, but I have been scrubbing this for a while and you can see there's still a fair amount of that creosote just kind of glazed to the inside of that terracotta liner. And if you look uh, kind of a few feet down, I'm not sure if you can see it that well. Oh, let's get down in here. There we go. But we've got like globs basically of glazed creosote. That's some nasty stuff. And it only goes down these two liners right here so thankfully it doesn't go all the way to the bottom the bottom two liners look pretty good but these two right here are looking pretty bad so here's 
here's what I've done. I've taken a hoe and I've sharpened it and I'm just going to see if I can scrape off that uh, glazed on creosote right there. All right, I've been scrubbing on this chimney for about an hour now. Let's see how it looks. All right, I wish you could see it better, but right here close to the camera, you can see there's obviously still some creosote going on right there, uh, except you can see the terracotta kind of in the patches there. But down on the bottom, the very first two liners down there are extremely clear. The third one right there is where the little globs, I guess you could say, start. This fourth one right here has got a little bit on it, and this last one is pretty much clear. So, yeah, a whole lot better. Not quite as good as I would have hoped, but better. So again, that was the result of about an hour's worth of work of just scrubbing with anything I could think of, basically. So, of course, I showed you this sharpened hoe that I used also used this right here with a drill on the end to make a little rotating brush down in there and also used this a ton just the standard rectangular brush that goes down in there truth be told it's probably time for a new one of these this was looking a little bit raggedy but anyway i'll show a before and after of that chimney this is Again, not quite as good as I would have hoped. Of course, I always want to get it down to bare terracotta pipe but uh, or liner, but it just didn't quite happen this time. However, I think that'll be perfectly fine for the year. So, guys, I really appreciate you watching this video. If you have a fireplace, do this before your first fire of the year, whether you do it yourself or you get a professional to do it, either one, and uh, it'll keep your home a whole lot safer. So, right now, we are back for a visit. Um, again, I've told y'all this on the channel before. I mentioned this on the channel before rather that I am not living here right now we are uh, moved off to a to a city actually and I'm finishing up my seminary degree but over the winter we are planning on being here for much longer visits so uh, I should my plan at least is to have more videos put out and I'm very much looking forward to getting a whole bunch of stuff done on the place here looking forward to posting some videos I'm very much looking forward to responding to comments and interacting with y'all a lot more uh, we may our YouTube people we really do uh, but anyway thanks a bunch for watching this video and I'll see y'all on the next one I almost forgot to mention with this chimney so that's not exactly the end of the job so I have to go down to the bottom yank the insert out and vacuum all the garbage that fell down in there it's just a very simple insert there's no fancy EPA junk all up in the way it's I'll just yank the insert I'll be able to vacuum the smoke shelf out vacuum around the insert get all the creosote and dust and junk that fell down in there and I'll be good but I won't bore y'all with that and truth be told that's probably a project for a another day but anyhow um yeah that's all i had i'll see y'all in the next one thanks again for watching